Um, I'm Amy Slofer. I'm the film archivist at the Wisconsin Center for Film and Theater Research in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, okay, this is my, it's my 10 year anniversary at EMEA, which seems like a really long time. Um, but I came as a student. So when I was um, in my first year at UCLA's Moving Image Archive Studies program, there was a call to see if for a student panel and one person from each program came, I think, and I was on that panel. So talking, because the, prog the education programs were still really new then, um, so there was a lot of talk about like if they were working or whatever. So, and I'm really glad I did that because I met so many people and yeah, saw like how supportive everyone at EMEA was. Um, I'm Mona Jimenez. I, I work at the NYU Moving Image Archiving and Preservation Program. And um, I think I came to my first EMEA, although it says here 15 years, that's probably the continuous years. I think I came the first year was 1994. Um, we had actually been trying to organize within the media arts community uh, to, to raise awareness of uh, preservation. And um, Margaret Byrne uh, was working at Name It, National Moving Image Database, and she came to one of our meetings where we were kind of throwing ideas out. And she basically said, you can either stay here and whine, or you can you know, network with other people who are doing what you do, because there's this whole community out there of, of people, especially the Association Moving Image Archivists. So that's how it got started. So we came really, I came really to try to insert media arts um, into the conversation and to learn from people and see how we could collaborate. Hi, um, I'm Yvonne Ng. I'm the senior archivist at Witness, which is a human rights video organization um, based in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I actually found it recently that Amy and I, are we had, we had our first AMIA conference at the same year in Austin in um, 2006. And I came, this was before I went to um, the MIAP program and I was just trying to check out the field and see if I wanted to apply to grad school and pursue this further. I had just finished an internship with Stephen Parr um, at uh, Oddball Film slash uh, San Francisco Media Archive and I was on a year-long um, grant to work at a artist-run center in Canada um, that was trying to look to preserve its film print collection. So I came down to the conference and it was great. I met so many people. I met some of the students from the NYU program and I was like, I, wanna, I think I want to go there. <laughs> and yeah, I just remember being way over my head in all of the sessions and not understanding what was the, what people were talking about, but thinking it was really great. So. Yeah. Well, I, um, I had an idea in my video class. I can't remember what year it was, probably 2007 to um, work on a collection, for the students to work on a collection. And uh, we went up to Rochester, New York, and, and the Southwick School um, students and, and, our, and, and the students in MIAP um, worked together with uh, some of the originators of a, of a group called Portable Channel in Rochester, New York. And so my idea was bring, pair, at that time, pairs of people together, some people who were more um, experience and a person who is less experienced together around a collection and do inspection and inventory using a spreadsheet and um, it was a lot of fun and uh, the next year I applied uh, well I organized a, a session with the Scribe Media Center and in Philadelphia when the conference was uh, was there <clears throat> I mean I had been doing I had been the director of Media Alliance which was uh, um, Actually, I think it was as, as director of the Ind Independent Media Arts Preservation, we had been doing uh, sessions at EMEA workshops outside of the conference for media arts groups. Every time I would come to a conference, we would get together with them. In fact, we did one here in Northwest Film Center at one point. Um, <clears throat> so this was not like a new idea. It was this idea of trying to be outside the conference and work with people who I knew had collections. So, so the Scribe Media Center one, I did actually apply to the AMIA um, conference committee, but I, I think I checked like panel question mark, you know, <laughs> workshop question mark, and they, they couldn't kind of get their head around it. And um, so that year it was not an official um, part of the conference, but the, um, 
but they kind of said, well, yeah, sorry, we didn't get back to you. We don't really know what to do. It's not a workshop. We can't charge for it. I, well, I said, you can't charge for it. They said, can we charge for it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, we can't. <laughs> so um, the next year, they were very open to that, um, to something happening. And I went to the Independent Media Committee uh, that year, and I was going on sabbatical. And I said, you know, you guys, if you want to do this, I would love, love to see it happen. Um, and so um, I... I worked with the committee, but I think that's where you guys sort of jumped in and said, yeah, let's do this. Um, so I'll just leave it uh, to you, to you two to explain that year <clears throat> and how, how the transition was made. Yeah, I remember that meeting and I, yeah, I didn't go to the scribe event, but I was like, like when I heard about it, I was like, oh, why didn't I go? Like I, but I, it wasn't in the program or anything. So, um. But yeah, I remember walk, going up to you afterwards and like putting my name on a clipboard or something. And then we just started getting emails and doing these terribly awkward conference calls. <laughs> they were so bad at the beginning. <laughs> well, actually, I remember uh, what had happened was I, I recruited from the EMEA list. And uh, Melissa Dolman, for example, was one of the people who came. And uh, others, and then my students were there. So it was kind of a combination of students and um, People from EMEA who were, ex who, were, who were able to do the work or help with the work, and then people from the Scribe Media Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I just wanted to add that because there was that little transition. Yeah. 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 So, there were some like material, there were actually some things written down, a few things. Yeah. Because no, I remember this meeting very distinctly <clears throat> too, because that was actually the first time I was chairing an independent media mm -hmm. committee meeting because the, that committee was actually founded by Stephen Parr like many years ago, and it, he, like it was more informal then, I guess, and it was like an interest group, and he, he had chaired it for, I guess, like 10 years, and finally he was like, okay, it's time for this to be sort of something that's more like the other committees where you have co-chairs and it's elections. So Lauren Sorensen and I ran that first year, and so that was the first time we were doing it. And, you know, I knew about Mona's project because, you know, like I went, you know, we just, we know each other, and I thought like, this is a great, this is a project that the committee should, should do. And, and that's how, I, like, I think, I don't even think I really knew you mm -hmm. until we all signed up yeah. to do this. There was, it was interesting, it was the first time I ever did committee work, like volunteered yeah. for a project, and I also, there was sort of this NYU-UCLA thing at the time, <laughs> and it was great to get to work with people from NYU, because yeah. it was, like, you guys knew stuff that we didn't, we weren't learning, so I felt like the film and the video, like, I learned so much about video from doing these projects, and yeah. like, things to think about when you're processing video and that I just didn't learn in school. Um, and I got to meet a lot of people that I didn't meet through other channels. Yeah, yeah and the first two years were just video. So mm -hmm. I, I, I remember thinking, wow, this new edition of film, that's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. I wonder how it's going to work. And, and I was very impressed that that was that you pulled that off. <laughs> yeah, we learned a lot from that first year. Like like you're like the conference calls were really awkward. We didn't know each other, yeah. and we're all in different cities and different time zones. Yeah. And like you know, trying to like know who wants to speak next when you're on a conference call and you can't see each other. It's yeah, like, it's difficult. It's funny, I didn't I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> So generally, the community archiving workshop is uh, sort of a bringing together of the local community where the um, conference is taking place with archivists who are coming to town for EMEA um, to work on a moving image collection at a local organization, one or more local organizations actually, um, just to help them get a grasp of what is in their collection um, and get some basic control over it so that they can t sort of take the next steps um, to like prioritizing and preserving that collection. So it's kind of like a day-long inspection and cataloging party. Um, and the goal of it is to not only just to do the sort of inventory and inspection, but also just to have people in the community meet each other, different groups in the community meet each other, um, and have people, have you know, archivists interacting with the local community so that we can learn about what's going on in the city where we're in and to expose people who might be completely new to like the idea of film and video archiving preservation just to like, you know, basic concepts and what we do. Yeah, so we start out um, by <clears throat> trying to recruit an organization 
Um, and one of the things that's been really great, I, I can't remember how many years we've done this, maybe four years, worked with the diversity committee. So it's really a co it's been a co-sponsored um, project between the diversity committee and the independent media committee. And um, so, um, and Mariah, Ula, how would I pronounce her last name? Linskes. Linskes. <laughs> sorry, Mariah. Mariah. Linskes. Yeah, sorry. So Mariah Alinskas um, was the person coming from the diversity committee who really started to. Um, I she took over a lot of the uh, outreach. Um, mm -hmm. That happened to be something she wanted to do. So. Um, and also Rachel Beatty from the diversity committee also mm -hmm. um, joined in. I think maybe. It's Year after was it the same year? I can't remember. Yeah, and other people that were involved. Uh, let's see, in the first year, Sandra Yates. Sandra Yates, yep. an incredibly yep. important person to yep. us. Yeah. Um, Who was the first year? <clears throat> Jeff Martin. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna feel bad for forgetting somebody. Now. <laughs> I know. But we started naming names. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're gonna have to scroll them across. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so what happens is um, we have to find a group or one or more groups that are interested in, in uh, hosting and being participating. Well, um, we we all uh, brainstorm, and I think we we uh, we have different people that we're in touch with. So um, obviously, a me members, anybody that we would know that would be an me member might have information. So I remember really important in Seattle was being able to reach out to the folks at the University of Washington mm -hmm. who had already been doing a lot of workshops and so they had a, a big list. Um, and then we always think about other forms of media making like community television, public access. Um, yeah, we do Google <coughs> searches for stuff too, so they're reaching out to groups that we don't have a personal connection to. And. Um, and then the, one thing leads to another because people will will have suggestions. So, so we kind of work that way. And um, yeah. And so once we and we collect the information and we, and we different people on the committee talk with them and find out if they're interested. And in I mean, sometimes you know, like last year it was a historical society took the lead. We also worked with a youth media group um, called All Walks of Life. And so we were. Uh, even though the Historical Society hosted it, it was a collaboration between the two groups. But other times, um, and, the, and, and sometimes that group has a lot of members that they want to, to be involved with the workshop, and sometimes it's casting a wider net to other, other groups that are out in the community. So, so yeah, we, we, we work on that, and then, and then it's a lot about what the organization needs. So, yeah, the whole, maybe somebody wants to, yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, well, like three years ago, we started making all this documentation of like, this is exactly what we do every time, kind of with the goal of we're going to disseminate this and maybe other people can organize these workshops too. And that helped like formalize these like finding, doing outreach, what do you do next? We send, a, we, we, we do a contract to say like, we're doing, Amia's providing this, the host organization is doing this, and we're very clear about it. Um, which helps, but sometimes things just come together at the last minute. Like, I don't remember what year it was, but Stephen Parr like came, swooped in and like gave us a contact. Maybe it was Seattle actually, because we were having a hard time finding a host. Yeah, we only worked with one collection in Seattle, right? And I, but I think it kind of happened last minute. But in general, like a lot of the planning, I feel like it, it feels really frantic or like it's not going to come together and then it always is yeah perfect like it seems like it just magically happens at the end <laughs> yeah and i think in previous years i would panic that it hasn't yeah. come together yet and now it's just like we know what we're doing yeah we'll all meet the, the day before in the city we'll go to the organization we'll figure it out it'll be great yeah i mean a lot of it is um i think some of the most most uh not difficult but sort of intense work with the group is around description and mm -hmm. you know and around the collections. So what collections do you have? And then what is your existing descriptive system? And then what what can we do that's and how can we mesh with that? And how can we sort of um, uh, you know understand where where that organization is at in terms of in terms of their collection care. So like a historical society is going to be very different than a 
youth media group or it, uh, this, this year we work with the Portland Institute for Contemporary Art and an individual artist for the first time. And so that was really different too because there we even have two different systems that they're working with. So, so trying to come up with what, what's going to work in terms of a, on, on that practical level of collecting information. Yeah, I think one thing we've gotten better at is like make, being able to make that assessment really quickly. Like actually, okay, for the last two years in a row, we've had emergency um, uh, situations where like uh, members of our committee who were presenting like suddenly couldn't be there for the workshop and so we've had members like fill in and do presentations and that's worked out great. You know we try to tell people we can usually get through 200 to 250 items but it doesn't always it's not always that clear you know we try to to make that a um, so depending on the organization like this last one we did there were all I mean I don't know how many how many a tapes thousand. probably over a thousand, over a thousand. <laughs> so a lot of so so in, <clears throat> inventory and inspection is always a big part of what we do but I would say also in Richmond uh, there was a lot of sorting that would be happening so sometimes you're you're just trying to get a to, to, to um, discover uh, how these materials relate to each other they may not be organized in any kind of way and within the organizational structure and then be able to sort things and then be able to provide some instruction okay these are all we think these are all edit masters we think these are all camera originals and this was a huge part of what we did this time was doing the was helping to sort um, just tons of mini DV. I know Yvonne was working on that. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe, I thought Seattle was really interesting because um, we had to talk to the organization there. It basically were like, well, you could catalog our DVD distribution collection. We're, well, no, that's kind of not what we do. We want, so what do you actually make? You know, what do you actually produce that's unique? Something that is, is your, it turned out they, um, they had been, it was the Gay and Lesbian Festival. What was the name of the organization? $3 Bill Cinema. Yeah, $3 Bill Cinema there. So they do distribution and they do this festival every year and they would give Super 8 cameras or Super 8 film to filmmakers and they would shoot and, and, and show what they shot at the festival. So they had like a bunch of years of that and they had a bunch of years of trailers of the actual festival. So everything from, um, you know, 35 millimeter, 16, uh, video, mm -hmm. um, digital video. And so we had to identify, okay, what are the materials that we can help you with? Because our mission is really not to, to do work about, you know, circulating collections. Mm -hmm. It's about stuff that's important to the organization and unique and so on. Mm -hmm. And that was super successful because they were able to, um, I think, transfer, well, to take sessions and things that they didn't need to have, but other people really, really wanted or it mm -hmm. made sense. And also working with the University of Washington, I think, to to establish that a stronger relationship there in terms of what they had. So that was interesting, but it was a lot of, um, and I we didn't know a lot about the film and things when we came, right? You you set up a film. Maybe yeah. you want to describe the film whole yeah. film setup because I think it's pretty yeah we pretty did. Cool. Well, that was such an interesting thing because that I was so excited when I found out about that like eight millimeter collection, and they were just like, oh yeah, and we have those eight millimeter films. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so we did in tons of inspection. I think we had like two stations set up. And that's the other thing with film is we just have to get equipment from people. So we, thankfully we had really good contacts in Seattle. So we were able to get a lot of film equipment in town. Um, and it, but it just goes so slowly because we have to train everybody. But I think it's a really, like that's how you learn how to do that stuff is you just have to sit for a day and work on it and move slowly. Um, but I think we did get through most everything and they, the institution or the organization understood the value of that collection then. And I think they were also like going to try to find things that were missing because they realized that they had let people, um, take their films back. And after the fact, they wished they would have kept them and they were going to try to do some outreach to get to unify the collection again. Um, yeah, I just remember sitting in this little glass room, like, for a day, all yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. You were there all day. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun, though. One of the other big pieces of work is going the day before mm -hmm. and um, trying to, and doing setup and trying to, uh, again, like, a lot of times just make some sense of what it is. So I think at $3 bill, we, we organized everything chronologically. 
and other places uh, like at the historical Georgia Historical Society, they had very specific um, collections, and are, and so we just set them up on the tables, and then people, um, and then the the um, All Walks of Life collection was at one table that people circulated. So often people do circulate and work at different stations. So it just depends, but a lot, but it helps. And I don't know. I think you you went to the to um, the Portland Institute yeah. for the. Yeah, it's just that when, when you have a community archiving workshop and you know there's going to be like 30, 40, 50 people who've never met each other working together for a short amount of time, like the you it really has to be clear what they're going to do and it has to be easy, like, easy to explain it. Everybody has to be able to do it the same way. So, I mean, that's pre, like the, the day before is really important for like making it clear like like we have to figure yeah it out. we have to know what we're doing and no yeah. we've never seen we've never met the organization in person we've never seen the collection until that mm -hmm. day so oh oh well at the workshop <laughs> last year it was like <clears throat> We maybe all have the same yeah, one. Yeah, the same <laughs> one. <laughs> the AWOL students, they were, this was like the, the at-risk students um, who worked at this after-school program um, and did media art and everything. And they got really emotional during the workshop. And there was one woman who was crying because she saw footage of herself from when she was younger, when she was like dealing with a lot of stuff. And it was just really powerful and also I just felt like we did a really good thing that day so that was my favorite <laughs> yeah yeah that was also I ran I must have run into the same same woman because the, <laughs> the organization had been around about 10 years and so the woman that I spoke to she had she was a staff member but she had been one of the um, trainees and so that was she was seeing herself but I think in that case um, I felt like we were making connections between two groups that really didn't talk to each other or mm -hmm. didn't know about each other. So so on one side, um, yeah, we're the Georgia Historical Society and collect a lot of things. Oh gee, you know, there's probably material out there that we, we don't even know exists and there are groups that really are important parts of our community. This particular group, African American youth, um, who were doing uh, theater and music and make, making media and have been doing it for 10 years. So I think that was um, that there was probably some awareness on the part of the historical society. Wow, there's uh, lots of collections out there. And then on the part of the, the um, AWOL, I think well, it might have been, wow, you know, this is a historic, historical society and, and um, you know, a place that, uh, a place for history and um, that we could be considered part of that history. And, and it was really, and in that in that particular um, workshop, also people were moving around a lot. So you would have somebody who's like a, you know, trained librarian next to a teen who's actually, you know, and they're doing the same work and sharing and and uh, and introducing young people to film who had been shooting on mini TV. So, yeah, that was a really fun one. But I have to say, the scribe one, I also really liked uh, the for very first one. It was just exciting. Um, to think that we that we could actually accomplish uh, a lot in a day that would make a difference to that to the organization. In that case, it was finding a lot of master material um, from it was again. Uh, well, I can't remember if it was high eight, I think, or something. Anyway, finding the masters so then they could do um, some preservation. So really, like I always say at the workshop, you know, we're just here to help jumpstart a process. It's really. And it's really about access. So all we're doing here today, you know, is trying trying to make a way toward access. So, so that's so. So my favorite moment is the same as their favorite moment. <laughs> so I won't repeat it. But I guess like something that's really gratifying to me is that hearing from the EMEA archivists that come to this that like this is now one of the favorite things they do at the conference is like sort of this one thing they look for like it's like an integral part of their conference experience because it reminds them of why they're like in this profession and who they're doing this for and like what collections mean to people and to you know communities 
um, and it's just seeing how it grew from a, a, a workshop that wasn't even part of the conference mm. to something that is now such an integral part of it is um, yeah. th that, that's really gratifying for me. And there have been a couple of uh, workshops that have happened outside of EMEA as well, so we don't really own it. Uh, Kelly Hicks organized one in Nashville, and I, uh, I organized one and worked with Walter Forsberg on it in Oaxaca. So, and I think we'll continue to, it will continue to grow outside of the organization as well.